among volleys of tear gas. Protesters occupied Baghdad's central Tahrir Square, while others pushed forward, attempting to reach the highly secured green zone that's home to government offices and embassies. Fed up with high unemployment and what they call top-level corruption, they're calling for the government to resign. Iraq's military imposed an overnight curfew, but many were defiant. No to the curfew. We will remain here. The curfew is one of their filthy games and tales. I'm an Iraqi mother. My sons have university degrees. I was hoping they would help me when they graduate, but they are jobless. It's dangerous. Medical sources say gas canisters fired by security forces killed three people on Monday when they took a direct hit to the head. Over the past month, scores of people have been killed and thousands injured. This is a popular demand asking for greater changes, greater reforms in the government and greater services. And this, the curfew um, is obviously a method by the government to carry out its, um, uh, its plans by ev uh, evacuating the, the main uh, areas, the main squares of the, of the cities from the demonstrators. Nationwide protests began at the start of the month, but paused for two weeks as they waited for Iraq's leaders to respond to their demands. They returned on Friday with renewed anger. Today, youth are not asking for jobs, nor for services. The young men want radical and real change from the regime. Thousands of university and school students defied orders and skipped class to join the protests on Monday. It's a huge challenge for Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi, who's only been in power for a year. He's promised to reshuffle the cabinet and introduce reforms, but he's refused the protesters' demand to resign along with his government. The prominent Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sada, who controls the largest bloc in parliament, has called on the government to announce early parliamentary elections. And with nearly 60% of Iraq's 40 million people living on less than $6 a day, many say they have nothing to lose and will continue to fight for a better future. Laura Burden-Manley, Al Jazeera.